Hello everyone and welcome to my second video. Today I wanted to talk about how to do detailed and advanced analysis of the research literature using the Scopus Database API as well as the Bibliometrics Python library. Now, I think if you're a researcher, you already know how to do basic literature search using tools like Google Scholar, uh, where you can find the most relevant articles for a particular topic. So today, what I wanted to talk about was how do you do something more complicated? For example, let's say you want to write a computer program that actually did a bunch of operations to do a detailed analysis for you of a topic. What I have in mind for the example today is something that I'm actually putting together for a review paper. The idea is I want to know what are the research papers that inspired other research papers on the topic of materials informatics. And what I have in mind for that is I want to first search for all the papers in the field of materials data mining, materials machine learning, uh, materials informatics, etc. And this is probably going to be about 5,000 papers or so. But then I don't want to just know about those papers. I want to know about what papers actually enabled this set of 5,000 papers. In other words, what are the papers that this group of papers tend to cite? But unfortunately, I can't just go through thousands and thousands of papers myself, look at all of the references, and figure out what are the most commonly cited things in this group of paper. So I need to write a computer program to do that for me. Step one is to get an API key from the Scopus API from Elsevier. Okay, so getting the API key is pretty simple. You just have to go to dev.elsevier.com and then you need to click, um, I want an API key. It's going to maybe ask you to sign in if you're not already signed in. And then it will give you a list of API keys that you've already had. In your case, it might be blank, but you can click this create API key button, uh, fill out a label for it. So my new API key, um, you can leave this blank and then read through the agreements, click these. And then when you click submit, you will actually have a new API key. Now the next step is to install the Bibliometrics library. Uh, this is pretty easy. You can just pip install Bibliometrics into a clean Python environment and it should go pretty smoothly. Okay, so now that we've uh, gotten our Scopus API key and we've installed the Bibliometrics library, we just have to program the analysis that we want to do. Now for this video, I have uploaded an example of uh, a particular analysis to GitHub. So here I am on github.com slash computron slash bibliometricsml, and I can clone this repo into my Python environment. And that will just give me an example of code that I can use to run my bibliographic analysis. So let's look more at this code so that you can understand what's going on. Um, the code is split into two parts. Um, there is generate.py and there is analyze.py. And I always advocate for having two different steps. The first step is to actually query a database or API for information and just store that information somewhere. And then the second step is to take the stored information and to analyze it. And this just gives you a little bit of flexibility so that afterwards, if you want to do different types of analysis or you want to fix the analysis script, you already have the information from the database stored and you don't have to keep querying it each time. Okay, so now that we've downloaded the libraries, I'm just going to walk you through the two parts of the code. The first part that we'll walk through is the generation code. So here in generate.py, let me just open that up in a text editor. And let's just quickly walk through this code together. You can go over it in more detail by yourself, but we'll just get an idea of what the code does and then we'll run it and I'll show you the results. So up here at the top, we're just doing some basic imports, including the Bibliometrics library that we just downloaded. Then what I'll do is I'm going to do a database query separately for each year to not have too many results in one query. And I'm going to store the information that I get in folders like output slash 2013, output slash 2014, output slash 2015, etc. So for our search, we'll be looking at papers that have the words data mining or machine learning in the abstract or in the title. So these will be machine learning papers, but they should also be about material science. So they'll have the title material or uh, in the abstract or the title, or the journal name might have the word material in it, like the Journal of Materials Informatics, etc. And the subject area should be materials, it should be an article. Uh, we'll go over later in the video how to actually set up this query, but then this will actually look for a particular year as to what are the material science data mining papers. Um, it will then go through each of the results for that year, all the material science data mining papers, 
and it will actually format that as a dictionary. So you'll get things like the title of the paper, the authors of the paper, the publication year, etc. Now, in addition to this basic metadata, we actually want to know what are all the references for this particular paper and to store the title and the, the authors and etc. of each of the references as well. That way, later on, we can count what are the most common references used in materials informatics. So here, what I'm going to do is to actually look up the document in more detail and to go through each reference of this document and to store the reference information as well. So again, for every single paper on materials informatics, we're storing the title, et cetera, of that paper, but we're also storing each of the references or each of the citations of that paper as well. And later we'll analyze the citations to see which ones show up to be the most common. Okay, so the next thing that I'll do is I'll run this file. So let me open this up. I will run my generation file. And here you can see it actually asks me for my API key. So that's why we had to get the API key in the previous step. So again, I want to go to dev.elsevier.com, go to your API keys, sign in, and then pick the API key that you want to use, copy it in, and then hit enter. And it looks like you can actually put multiple keys. I've never done that before. Uh, I've always just edited the keys later if needed. So there we go. And now you can see that after I entered my API key, it is actually downloading uh, paper information, etc. So let's see what it is that it's actually downloading. So here I am, you can see that it's created this output folder. It's created years, and then in each year it creates these JSON files that has the results of the query. If I open up one of these files in a text editor, um, it doesn't look like much. But if I were to copy this into a JSON editor, you can see that it has grabbed things like for every paper, what is the, uh, the author, and then crucially it looks at all the references. So this is the title of the paper that we searched for, and here are all the citations of that paper. So this is every paper that was cited by the paper that we care about. Um, so for example, principles of determining structure or complex ionic, etc. Um, so once we now have this information, we can analyze our results and see for all of these papers that we've grabbed on materials machine learning, what are the most common references? What are the things that have inspired all of these papers or serve as the underpinning for all of these papers? So to do that, we need to actually run our analysis script. So here we have our analysis script. Uh, what the analysis script will do is it will actually loop through all of these JSON files, uh, all these different papers, and then figure out what are the most common citations. So let's just walk through this code really quickly. We have our normal imports. We have a helper function to help us find all these JSON files. And what we'll do is we'll actually find all the JSON files. We'll go through every single JSON file, so every single paper on the topic of materials data mining. We will look at each reference, and then we will label that reference, uh, that citation by its DOI, title, etc. And then we will count uh, how many times that reference has been used across all of these papers. So again, we have like 5,000 JSON files or 6,000 JSON files, 6,000 papers. And we're going to be going through every single one of these, looking through the you know, 30 or 40 references each of these papers has, and then counting the most frequent ones. So this all refs counter will count things up. At the end, we're going to look at the most common 100 items, and then we will just print them out. So that's how this analysis file works. Let's just go to our folder and then run this analysis script. So here it's going to parse through 6,795 uh, articles and tell us the most common references, the most common citations between them. Let's scroll all the way to the top and we'll find the top thing that has been cited. And it looks like the number one thing that's been cited by machine learning and material science is the scikit-learn machine learning library. So this particular machine learning library is used the most in all the machine learning papers in material science. If you look at some of these other top ones, this generalized gradient approximation made simple. So this is a technique for density functional theory. Often, uh, you know, machine learning papers are fit on density functional theory results. This efficient iterative schemes paper, that's the main paper for the VASP software, again, for doing density functional theory. Random forests, again, this is a very commonly used technique, it appears, for materials machine learning. Uh, and then finally, this commentary materials project. So this is the materials project database of density functional theory calculations on which many machine learning models are built. 
So we can see now how by going through this process, we were able to look through 6,795 papers, look at all the citations of every single one of those papers, and figure out what are the most common citations that exist. Okay, so now let's talk about how to customize this query for you. Uh, remember when we were looking at our generation script, we had this query that was particular to what I was interested in, which is uh, machine learning and material science. You might be interested in the most commonly cited uh, references for papers about a different topic, like you know, solar photovoltaics or electrocatalysis or whatever. So here's how you can uh, do this search query or figure out what goes in the search query. To do that, you need to go to scopus.com slash search, and you may need an institutional subscription to be able to do that. And then you just fill out the search field manually, so you may be interested in uh, the abstract having the word electrocatalyst in it. And I might also be interested in, let's just say, the uh, abstract also having the title density functional theory. And if I do search here, it will do the search, uh, so that's great. But then you can also do advanced query, and it will convert your search into this advanced query string, which you can then copy and then paste into your code. So you can paste that over here. So that's how to do the, uh, the design of this, this query string that goes into the Scopus search field. Okay, so now that you know how to use the Scopus API as well as the Pivliometrics library, uh, if you do give this a shot, you should cite everything appropriately. Uh, there is a Scopus attribution guide that you can use to figure out how to cite the Scopus API. Usually it's something like this data was downloaded from the Scopus API on certain dates and from these links, I'll put uh, the text on the side there. You also want to cite the Pivliometrics library. Uh, this was developed by Michael Rose and John Kitchen and they've written a paper on the Pivliometrics library that you can cite. Uh, that was in the journal Software X. So again, I'll put a link to that in the description uh, of the video as well as to the side over here. All right, so hopefully you were able to follow along and learn a little bit about how to do advanced literature searches using the Scopus API and Pivliometrics library, and now you're able to do many more complicated and interesting analyses of the research literature. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do, and some of the examples are actually given in the paper by Michael Rose and John Kitchen in that Software X uh, paper that I mentioned. So you can look in there for inspiration of other things that you can do. I hope you give this a try. You know, don't just watch the video, but actually download the code, try fiddling with it yourself. As always, let me know how it goes, and I hope to see you in the next video.